the first thing I want to do is to look around and try to think like a fish. I want to guess where, if I was a fish, I would stay. The first thing you want to look at is how deep is the pool. And then, if you fish the nymph, you want to stay with the lightest possible nymph that gives you, give you drift with the speed close to the current. As a rule of thumb, the lighter the nymph, the better the drift, more natural. So your problem is always the drag induced by the monofilament. So you have to use a thin monofilament and try to use the lightest possible imitation to have them presented to the fish in a very natural way. And there are chances that at the end of the, of the drift to keep holding your flies sometimes give you a fish because your name from the bottom will rise to the top and the fish will think at an emerging insect. So they will go on. Best time to do that is in the evening. During the day, I would suggest as first choice, fishing the nymph on dead drift and natural presentation. This is the mo the, what we call the universal cast for the Tenkara road, and it's called the Belgian cast. This cast is done keeping the line under constant tension and with a very smooth movement. So what you will draw is an oval with your rod tip, you go back, you move in, and you deliver forward. So the key of this cast are, you want to have constant tension with the line, and you have to draw with the tip of your rod an oval. So you start with the rod low, tension on the line, you go back, you stop here, you move the rod in, and you go forward. So I'll show you now in continuous motion, you do this and this, this and this. The most common mistake are either to move the rod too much towards you, thing that can hurt you because you can have the line on your back, or to go too low with the tip, like this. So that's another mistake because first of all, if you go too low with the tip on the back cast, you can hit something, but you create a huge loop that will kill your precision. So you have two different ways to present the fly with this cast. One delivery that is what we can call a delicate delivery. You, in that case, you want to stop high with the rod and let it go down. So you stop high and then let it go down. So this will give you a very high, delicate presentation. So this way you will have the best of the presentation for dry fly or wet fly. If you fish the nymph, this, this presentation is good as well. But if it's, for example, windy and you don't want to get in trouble of having your flies on the bank, you better do it and go down, nearly pushing your fly in the water. And this will avoid to have the fly going around. If the conditions are calm, the best presentation is the one you get stopping high and going down following the line. As I've got the wind blowing on my face, instead of a regular cast, I will work a, a water tension cast. I put the line down and just flip it in and get in. So let's see if we are lucky. When you fish in a small pool like this one, you have to cast upstream in order to give your nymph enough time to go down deep. That, that little bend is quite deep, so I'm trying to fish my nymph as deep as possible. And that's why I cast upstream and then I let it go down following with the rod tip. 
Once the nymph get closer to you, as you've just seen, I have to lift the rod to keep it under control. So I start low, when they are in front of me, I lift it, and I just wait to see if anything happens. You don't want to pull the nymph, but you just want to follow them smoothly. That's all you want to do. Uh, here we are. Here we are with the first one. Good. So it seems that the rig was right. So in this case, the fish is not very big, so you can just smoothly. You keep the rod low as usual, and when you get close to yourself, you want to turn down the tip, reach the line, get the fish close to you, ready to release him. So, I, I don't want to even touch the small guy, I just get my finger wet and let it go. I'm using two nymph here because it's quite windy and as in places like this you cannot fish very big nymphs to add some weight and go down quickly. It's more deep than what you can think. We will fish places up to five, six feet. So the best way to have reach some depth is to use a two nymph rig and that's why I've got two this rig set up. Just Okay, yes. when the wind is blowing on you, you want to do a little mend upstream and then follow through. Okay. It's a very windy morning, so I have just changed my rig to a very short one, like about 12 feet. And instead of using a fly line, I'm using just a monofilament. I stay on quite far from the river because the water is gin clear and the fish are very spooky and I will cast in front of me using the wind. So what I'm going to do is just keep the, the fly in the hands and flick them in using the wind and then follow through. So that's the way I just follow the fly all the way through and then I just lift them up, let them in the wind, the wind will load my line, and go back again. So when it's very windy like now, you better use the wind rather than fight with the wind. You've got always this choice, so you see I'm keeping the fly on the wind, the wind will load my line and I go back slowly in the water. So keep the rod low. That is the best way to do that. So one big advantage of fishing the Tenkara on small places like this is that you improve a lot your accuracy because you repeat always the same cast with the same length of line and you never cast too far from you. So in this way, you will notice that your accuracy will improve a lot through the day. Oh, this is a good boy. This is a good one. In this case, you better follow them rather than leaving too much line out. So that's what I'm going to do. I follow the fish Tenkara like. Let's see. And this fish looks to be in very good condition. It doesn't want to move much. I try to apply side pressure because with big fish it does pay off. They don't like to be pulled in front, but with the side pressure you might get better result. Although this fish is not certainly a fish that will come easily. Let's see 
if we are lucky and we can get it. So I keep on following the fish with the rod very low. Oh my god, that's huge. For this river is a huge fish. That's a record. On, on this fish you have to be very patient. If you do the smallest mistake, the fish is gone. And I hope not to. When, when you have a big fish on, you have always to concentrate 360 degrees to check out which are all the possible danger around you and avoid them as much as you can. If I can put him in the slow water there, should be done. It's usual. Oh, oh. That's a big fish. 